Hey guys, and welcome to this uh, tutorial on how to make a data lifestyle synth. Um, basically, uh, to make this synth, I've um, gone onto a few YouTube channels, and notably, I've looked at Ryan NZ's uh, version of this, which is on um, NZ Music 101. Um, Ryan's version of this synth uh, basically sounds like this. Um, there are numerous flaws with this synth or this version of it. Um, I'll quickly like um, talk through those now. Um, one thing is he basically says to boost 7 dB at um, 94 hertz with a narrow Q and the same at 310 hertz, 9 dB with a narrow Q. Um, the bad thing about doing this is boosting this much um, at a frequency will basically create a ringing um, of this frequency at this point. Um, so when you actually play the synth, um, if you listen to the E, well, the reverb, or even without the reverb, you can hear a ringing at this frequency. Um, additionally, uh he basically advises to put um a reverb on it um which is a medium e well a medium sized reverb which is about two point seven seconds long, which is reasonably long for an electro uh bass line um normally when you want to do put a reverb if you want to put a reverb on an electro bass line, you wouldn't have anything anywhere near this long um Normally you'd have I, the one that I've used on my version is not even a second long. Um, this is because you want a nice tight uh, punchy bass as opposed to something like this uh, which um, won't give you quite the sort of tight punchy bass that you're after. Um, also additionally uh, to this is Putting a reverb straight on the channel, um, unless you EQ it, you're just going to be putting reverb on the bass frequencies, which is going to lead to a muddy mix. Um, so that that's basically all the flaws that I've picked out of this. Um, to be fair, though, credit to Ryan, he's a he's a very good producer. Um, but I just wanted to go through this um, and tidy some of it up and show you the version that I've created. Um, so just a comparison between the two, my version was considerably louder, not because I've turned any volume up, uh, but just because of the way I've processed it. So I've turned it down a little bit. But as a comparison, the two synth versions sound like this. This is Ryan's version again. And this is my version. So, um, to create my version, my processing chain, first I just um, put on a low cut at about 35 hertz. I also put on a high cut. Uh, I will go into the um, the synth in a sec. I'm just going through the processing chain first. I've copied um, Ryan's overdrive settings. I also um, copied the homicide settings roughly, which are in if you use the um, the setting that Ryan. Uh, advisors choose which is just the base and then the number three preset and then pushing up the volume of it to about seven and a half and then increasing the distortion amount to about 10.3 um, I've got the dry wet mix on about 75 percent 
and the master volume on about minus five and a half. Uh, the main thing that sort of really fattens this up, as I noticed uh, most people saying, um, why hasn't he got this on, is Sausage Fattener, um, which is actually by Dad Life themselves. Um, for this, I uh, basically increased the fatness amount to about 75%, and the colour to about 85%. Um, basically what this plugin does is it acts kind of like a compressor and a limiter at the same time. Um, as you increase this, you'll notice it'll basically squash it and make it a lot louder. Um, uh, one thing I'll probably explain that I like to do now while I'm um, processing things is I like to have a channel EQ up, if I'm working in Logic anyway. What this, allow, what this basically allows you to do is see how the way you're processing things is affecting the frequencies of the sound you're processing. So if I just like let my um, synth loop quickly um, and then I turn up the fatness, you'll notice how turning this up will affect the frequencies of my sound. So it basically compresses everything um, and also makes it louder. Also, um, the way the color knob works is it kind of acts like um, an EQ affecting the mids, the high mids, um, and some of the highs. So if I play my synth and sweep through this, you'll notice um, it'll basically sort of um, accentuate some of the frequencies and you'll see um, some activity changing in this um, region here. Um, I've also sent it to a bus um, with a small EQ on it, uh, which is in small spaces, rooms, and it's drum booth one. I've turned the reverb up to max as it's on a bus. Um, and I've also put an EQ on it, um, which is to cut out any of the low frequencies um, that could be coming through the reverb. Right, um, time to look at the synth. Um, for part one, I've detuned it by an octave. Um, it's on a saw wave. It's got two voices and I've left the re-trigger on. Um, the volume of the saw is on 7.48. Um, I'll get to why I turn this down in a second. I've also kept the phase as the same as in Ryan's tutorial, which is on 24 degrees. The detune's all the way down, the stereo's all the way up, and the pan's in the middle. Um, the decay and the sustain are both fully up. Um, on oscillator 2, I've de uh, turned the octave down by minus 1. Instead of... Um, a Q pulse, like in Ryan's tutorial, um, I found that a tri saw sounded a bit better. I've turned the voices to two, and the re-trigger's still on. The volume's all the way up. The phase is like hasn't changed. The detune is on about 2.76. Stereo is full, and the pan is um, in the middle. Um, the reason I've kept the volume of this down a bit is uh, if I quickly play this um, just on its own, you'll hear the trisaw wave. Um, and by increasing the volume of this um, oscillator here, 
you can get different um, timbres of uh, your synth. Um, personally, I think it sounds best between about seven and ten. So I'm going to put this to about back to about seven point four again. There we go. Um, for the settings on here, the cutoff is at about nine point seven. The resonance is one point two nine, and the drive is on about six point one nine. Uh, the filter type is a bandpass, and the um, the slope is on 24 dB. Uh, for this, the cutoff is on full. Resonance is all the way down, as is the key track, and I've got warm drive on. Uh, turn this up a sec. Right, for part B, um, oscillator B1, detuned by um, minus 1. The wave is on a saw with one voice and the re-triggers on. Volume's up, the phase is all the way down, the detune's all the way down, stereo is all the way up and pan's in the middle. Again we've got um decay and sustain is all the way up. And oscillator uh, B2 is detuned by um an octave. It's on a sine wave in um instead of a Q pulse. Mainly because I felt that this gave the bass sound, um, it sounded more full and more fat. Um, the voice is on one, and the re-trigger is on. And basically nothing's changed, they're all on their default settings. Um, for filter B, we've got the cutoff is on 2.04. The resonance is on about 4.86. The drive is on 4.71 and the filter type is a low pass. The input select is on BA and the slope is on 12 dB as I felt this made the sound sound more fat and more full. Um, and when it comes to sort of customizing your sound, basically um, you need to blend mix A and mix B. Uh, mix A is the sort of highs or the top of your sound. And mix B is basically the base of your sound. So um, if we blend these two, there's the base. And if we listen to mix A, that's the top of the sound. So if we uh, sweep mix A up, we can blend the two and get a sound that we like the sound of. We also want to make sure that our output isn't clipping. Um, and then if you want, you can add any glide that you want down here. Um, and that's basically how I created this synth. Um, if you guys have any questions, post a comment in the comment box or send a message to my YouTube inbox. Thanks guys and see you in the next video.